We find ourselves in the Nelson countryside on our way to visit Martin Townsend, owner and brewer at Townsend Brewery, specialising in British ales. We're looking forward to checking this out. Ah, oh, welcome boys. How are you Martin? Alright, what'll it be? See cool. Hello, Hello Kelly. Kelly. How's it going? Nice right. to meet you. Sweet ass, sweet ass. So tell us a bit about this place. Martin, what's your story? How did you get to, to Nelson? Uh... Came here in 93 and ended up uh, meeting my wife a couple years later. I was working on an orchard in Mariri about um, 15 minutes from here and uh, we're all saving hard, us boys, uh, picking apples. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way we could do that was by making our own piss. So we started off with the kits, as you do, and making 60 litres every six days and getting passed every night for free, just about. <laughs> And, uh, um, and, uh, and that sort of set me off on the, on the rocky road and then uh, went over to the UK for a while, lived uh, uh, um, there, worked hard, got enough money for a deposit, came back here in 2001 mm -hmm. and um, I was listening to local radio station and um, uh, I, there was, every week they had a guy to come on and talk about wine. I thought this is just not good enough so I rang on and said, you need to have a guy talking about beer and they said alright you do it. So I did and I did it for about 18 months, every week went on speaking about different beers, trying beers, talking about local breweries, blah blah. Whilst doing that, I ended up getting a job for the Nelson Mail, writing about the air as well. So I kind of got a bit of an introduction in the industry as well as building myself a 50 litre, a gravity fed system, which developed into a, um, a 240 litre system because my mortgage is up for review and rather than spend on home improvements, I spent on stainless steel equipment. <laughs> and that was that side of things. And then about um, six months ago, we went and uh, back to the bank, scored a big wad of cash because I just couldn't keep up. And now we make, um, about eleven, about three and a half thousand litres a month, give right. or take, depending. Because I so look after, I have to look after my son two days a week. So because my wife works, so it's a bit of a juggle. But now I've got temperature control. Yeah, things yeah, are cool. Yeah, things yeah. are cool. Yeah. yeah. So you went went down the car scale route, oh, obviously just, with your uh, heritage. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the classic line is um, just wanting to relieve my homesickness. But to be honest mm. with you, it's um, I really, really love the stuff, mm. as what, well as obviously yeah, doing yeah. a bit of keg stuff, bottle product oh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But all the bottle product is. Uh, bottle condition so it's as close yeah. to real ale as we can possibly get it without you know wanting to ram that real ale thing down your throat you know yeah. so how much are you doing in bottle as versus uh, cask uh, I should it should be about 40% cask and 60% bottle but at the moment it's probably hovering around about 25% bottle I really need to get my okay. A into G and just push that side of things obviously there's probably a little bit more money from my point of view and in the bottle product, but it's considerably labour intensive. Now, well, last night at the Moutry Inn, we tried your um, stout on no, tap, no. and that wasn't on cask, was it? Uh, uh, no, it, it wasn't, because the, that was the flagship of the brew for a while, the, the number nine, but it just doesn't seem to sell as well in summer mm -hmm. out the cask. Oh, so the so I started, car I carbonated it as just a one off, and it sold really, really well, and it's actually turned out, it's, I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out, but still I'm kind of leaning towards this side of things but mm -hmm. the, the keg stuff really backs up my sales because there just aren't the venues to look after it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the bottom line. So mm -hmm. are you shipping outside of the Nelson uh, region yeah, very much? Got, um, well there's the, the, the Mort House takes a bit now and there's the Bar Edward and um, we've got Ruakura Canvas Club up in Hamilton. It seems to be going really well but it's just a little bit disappointing sometimes when a pub just won't take that extra challenge because yeah. there was all that talk at Birvana uh, last year that um, you know, Wellington's the beer capital of New Zealand. You can't get a pint of real ale there, boys. What's <laughs> I mean, all that about? Nelson's where it's happening. There's two venues here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the breweries are definitely around this region are definitely quite a pull now for a lot of tourists. Yeah. And um, the guys at the Moochie have started a beer tourist map. Yeah. And I think that um, we can st really stand loud and proud here. No worries. And we're all doing our own thing. We're all very independent folk. And I know that because the craft brewers are trying to get brewers together just on a, you know, once a month, let alone put up with all their different personalities and yeah. ideas and concepts. Blimey, what a headache, it's really grey here. Um, <laughs> um, and that was even before I got into it. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's great, I just love it. I, I'm, I, I really, really like what I do, boys. I really love it. It's great, can't wait to get up in the morning sort of thing. So, so this is um, bottle conditioned, 4%. Um, it's kind of my tribute to Fuller's London and Pride. Hey, right, cheers, boys. Cheers. cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome. Good out. Thanks a lot. Alrighty. As well as this old house ESB, Martin bottles the brilliant JC IPA and the number nine stout amongst others. Be sure to hunt them out. That sort of, uh, that sort of like, almost that British kind of marmalade sort of mm -hmm. hop character going on what, there. Um, it's got a little bit almost like a Goldings character a little bit in the, yeah, in the hop. Yeah, Goldings in the end and bubbles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a uh, Green Bullet and Challenger for the drink. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 That's a really nice beer. Guys. So, I think we got to get going, hit the road. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't spend all afternoon here uh, drinking your lovely stout yeah. as much as I'd like to. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to hit the next brewery. We're off to Rewaka to meet up with Matt from Monkey Wizard Brewery with the motto, if you don't like it, don't drink it. 
we're pretty sure there'll be some fascinating beers to taste. Their brewery and shop are big on sustainability and the majority of their beers are sold in returnable plastic flagons. We think that's great. Ooh, here we go. Wonder if anyone's here. Bing! Hey! Hey, how's it going? Not bad. How Luke, are you? Luke Nicholas, how are you? Matt Elmhurst, Monkey Wizard. Kelly Ryan, how's it Welcome going? Welcome to Rear Walker. How's it Kelly going, Kelly? Kelly? Foster, nice engineer. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Monkey Wizard, tell us about the name, where does it come from? Well, you, you could imagine with a, with a name like Monkey Wizard, we don't do anything conventionally. Um, I try and be as wild and as wacky as we possibly can, and I don't really do what we consider to be the standard classifications of beer for the, for the most part. I believe in the new world, like the new world wine, we should really do new world beer. A dentist by day, Matt blends science and alchemy with an almost biodynamic approach to his beer making. Together with engineer Lyle, they're really keen on making their brewery as sustainable as possible, even installing their own solar water heating system on the roof. I am um, Rewalker. I understand the hops. Is that the, the motivation to, to set up here? And I lived in Golden Bay for four years and used to go to the Muscle Inn quite a lot. And I work in, was working in Richmond at the time and used to drive past this doorstep all the time. And this used to be an old butcher's shop and it's been a butcher's shop since the 40s. I've, yeah, I've never been a particular big good businessman, but I sort of go, oh, yeah, you know, it's got a poured floor, it's got a chiller, it's got to be good for a brewery. And yeah, and eventually I sort of put my money where my mouth was, sold my house and bought this. And that was, as it says in the official storyline, the long and wobbly road of the monkey wizards. Keen to show off his wizardry skills, he goes about conjuring brewery assistant Jackie out of thin air. I only use New Zealand hops, and I know Martin's very keen on using old world hops. I only use New Zealand hops, I only use New Zealand malt as well. Um, I augment that with a certain amount of imported malt, which I think the vast majority of us do. Matt also uses local fruits such as raspberries and foraged elderberries, spices such as cinnamon and black pepper, locally picked elderflowers, and he even makes his own cider. Moving swiftly onward, will we try some beers now, gentlemen? Fantastic. Right then, guys, we've got some Savvy Blonde now. So this is, yet again, a light ale, or a golden ale, I suppose, is the new lingo in the world of this. Uh, this is done with Nelson Savin yet again, but a lot more. It's exclusively Nelson Savin. So you're getting a little, little sort of medicinal character off there. Absolutely. And again, obviously that outer flower character is definitely there as well. There's an undertorrent of sort of uh, sort of kiwi and gooseberry that comes from the the, the, the hop. Yeah, good bitterness in the mouth. You've got some lovely again the sort of nasturtium sort of vegetable character. It's good, very nice. Part of our travels around, we're um, wanting to have an end goal, where we um, are trying to capture the the essence and the, the craft and New Zealandness of um, what all, all of the people are doing and um, creating a collaborative brew. Really just looking for those raw ideas from, from brewers and just trying to capture the, the essence and the spirit of each, each brewery and just bring that together with everyone and just see what we come up with. There's one ingredient that's coming to the tip of my tongue and, and it's been done before so it's not an original thought. The great god Randy Mosh has done it previously so Chanterelles would be nice. Uh, a nice mushroom beer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a certain good. amount. A certain amount. We don't have a na native Chanterelle, but there are other mushrooms in New Zealand that yeah. I'm very familiar with. And I'm not the ones that people might be thinking of. <laughs> um, definitely not. I would go for a truffle. I think that's, considering I've just thought of it on the spot, I think uh, a truffle. Perigord Black or something like that would talk to the, the Tree Crops Association. That would be my input on that one. Um, on a more conventional note. Ooh, I don't know if I can offer anything on that one. <laughs> um. Hmm, truffles may be a challenge, but at least we know we'll be able to use some fungus in the beer. If you find yourself on the main road of Rewaka, be sure to pop in and buy a few beers. You'll definitely find something you'll love. We head through the picturesque hop fields that surround Mochuaka and Rewaka, and over the Takaka Hills. We're getting closer to Onikaka and its world famous in New Zealand Muscle Inn to meet up with owner, brewer and all round top bloke Andrew Dixon. Here it all happened. Well, do you want to tell us a bit about the brewery, your history, you know, what are you doing in, uh, in the middle of this beautiful sort of forest and uh, brewing beer? Hop forest. Hop forest. Yeah. Having a good time. <laughs> nice, nice. So when did, when did you start off here? Oh, we started brewing in 1995. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we started the cafe in 92. Mm -hmm. 
a couple of years to get that going, and then brewery in 95. So the Manuka beer, how, how do you make that? You're, you're putting Manuka in it, plant material? Yeah, yeah, basically. We just go out into the scrub and pick a bit of... Bring it back here. A few branches? Throw it in the kettle, yeah, tips of the branches. I'm, I shouldn't really be telling you this, of course, but no. it's all, you know, these are the secrets. But, well, I actually... I'd... So it's not Manuka honey? No, 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 it's the real McCoy, yeah. yeah. It gets it's the actual plant. Tips of the branches, you've got the stems, you've got the seeds, you've got the flowers, there could be some lizards on there, you've got the black fungus that grows on it, all oh, sorts of stuff. Secret yeah. stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. Yeah. Special herbs and spices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. it has many a medicinal property, the, the Captain Cooker. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The lizards. We had it tested and it's got like 30% more antioxidants than comparative beer. Really? So it's you know, basically a health beer. You can feel good about drinking it, yeah. Go and uh, have a look at the, the brewery. Check, Check out the, the operation. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? The brewery sits in the back of the Muscle Inn Cafe, which is renowned for its fantastic live music events and great local fare. Sustainability is key, with his bottled beer all filled into recycled and reused glass. Andrew experiments a lot with barrel aging and sour beers. His Lamborghini is a brilliant sour girl style beer using locally grown Fijo fruit and Weka, a sour brown ale which is delightfully tart, rich and fruity. We head outside to have a beer and a chat about Andrew's most famous brew as well as meet up with Mick Dover who's holidaying from his brilliant Nelson pub, The Free House. So we're here we're trying the, the Captain Cooker, yeah. we are. Manuka beer. I mean, it, smell, it smells like manuka, doesn't it, really? It tastes like manuka. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like eat, eating the tree. It is. I mean, I guess manuka is quite a unique fragrance. It's got that sort of a bit of that citrus sort of blossom. It's got that kind of almost resinous juniper sort of character to it. It's got Definitely resinous and the, the oil. And a little sort of rose oil, rose yep. water sort of note going on. It's a, uh, it's a great beer. Love it. Yeah. Maybe you could tell us about your journey over the last 10 years to actually get to the free house and sort of sort of back back up okay. on all the, all the activities and ventures that you've had to yeah. build a community and an interest around craft beer in New Zealand and, and ultimately opening your own um, free house in Nelson. We formed a kind of cluster marketing organisation called Craft Brewers and it was about five local breweries and the idea was to raise their profile because I was living in Nelson, I'd just arrived from England and discovered beer like this, but you couldn't go anywhere. I mean, I couldn't travel to the Muscle Inn from Nelson every day to get a decent beer. Uh, and there was a few decent breweries like Founders and Lighthouse, but the outlets, as ever, were just you know, the mainstream uh, DB and Lion Nathan. So it's really frustrating. You, there was nowhere to go to get a decent drink. So I started holding beer tasting evenings. A few years of doing events, and we thought people would, somebody would come along and open a pub in Nelson. Uh, there was a free house and had all these beers, but nobody did. And then a little church came up, which I think you're going to tomorrow, is that right? And um, Elka and I took one look at that church and said, well, that would make such a great pub. Uh, and it was affordable because it was on um, lease land. And um, yeah, and we did it in 2009 and it's going, it's going, re going really well. Finally, we check out Andrew's handmade Manuka machine. Engineered by himself, this is what makes Captain Cooker possible, stripping the tips off the Manuka branches. What really strikes us about Andrew is his ability to innovate. He's constantly on a voyage of discovery and creation and has the passion that is needed to make great beer. If you're ever visiting or holidaying in the Tasman region, it's a must visit. <laughs>